associated with them, and we will actually merge them in. So we would detect this, we would merge this forward, you would lose this ABHD, and you would end up with these two snapshots looking exactly like what you would have if you'd never taken uh, that intermediate snapshot. And that's actually shown in the UI. Once you turn off the virtual machine, you'll see you just see a dialogue that says there, something there, that extends. There's, there's, there's a little text thing that says merge we're merging. Happening. Uh, but the important thing is whether, we're mer whether we've merged or not, the behavior to the end user is always the same. Once you delete a snapshot, all you've done is said, I can't go back to that point in time. There's no other implication. You haven't affected other snapshots. You haven't affected your running virtual machine. The, the other interesting thing is, so I've been coming down this path, and through this whole path, I've been running on this configuration. And as I you know, create these snapshots, I'm now running on these ABHDs. So a lot of people wonder when we say snapshots are read-only, what happens if I apply a snapshot? So let's say you know, I'm out here, and I come back and I say I want to apply this first snapshot. The first thing that, that happens is we come up and we prompt the user to say, hey, you've got a bunch of data since you took your last snapshot that isn't saved at the moment. Do you want to take another snapshot, or do you want to just throw this data away? Now, if you say take another snapshot, we'll get a snapshot here, and everything will be saved. If this was, you know, I've only just taken a snapshot and I haven't done anything meaningful since, and I want to go back and apply this, I'm going to say no, I don't care, uh, throw that away. And in which case, basically, this state gets thrown away, and we have up until this snapshot. But I've said let's apply this snapshot. So what's going to happen is we will actually basically create this branch. We're coming from here. And we will copy this down to be the new configuration. We'll copy this down to be the new memory. And we will create a new AVHD that refers to this guy. So if you remember, this guy points back to the VHD. This is going to be an AVHD that points back to this guy. And what this means is, this is your new starting point, as it were, and you're now able to run and do things here. And in this whole process, this snapshot hasn't changed at all. It's still there. You can still access it like you could before. This snapshot hasn't been affected. But I can come down here and take new snapshots. And everything I've done in the past is maintained. And I have the flexibility to start from any snapshot along the way. So that AVHD that's down there, is that, can, can somebody use that just like a, v, a regular VHD or no? No. So we, you know, because we have all this logic, so from, from a format point of view, yeah, it's a regular VHD. But because we have all this logic behind the scenes where we are keeping track of what snapshots are associated with AVHDs and we do this automatic merging, we really don't want people to be going and, and playing with those directly because you could hit scenarios where, you know, you've created a, a differencing disk that references an AVHD and then sometime down the road you delete the, the snapshot that owns that AVHD. We won't know about your side differencing disk and we'll you know, merge, the, you know, merge the changes through them all of a sudden we've broken your scenario. So we, through our interfaces and so on, we don't allow you to treat these as virtual hard disks. What you need to do, if you get to the stage where you're like, okay, let's say Let's clean up this diagram a bit. Let's say you're 15 snapshots deep and you really just want to make that your permanent yeah. VHD, yeah. then what do we do? So let's say I've, I've taken you know, a couple of snapshots. And I'm out here. I'm at snapshot 7. Um, and I've gone, OK, what I really want now is I want just a VM that's this snapshot. Uh, with no snapshots, and I want to send it to someone else. So the way you do this, quite simply, is you delete any snapshots you don't want. And if you take a virtual machine and you delete it down to having no snapshots, what's actually going to happen is all the changes from these snapshots, or more specifically, all the changes from the snapshot that you, know, you currently have active and, and you're running off, will get applied into the base VHD. So one other question we quite often get is, you know, 
okay, I've got you know my virtual machine which has half a dozen snapshots, um, and I'm happy. I like those snapshots. This is great. But you know what I really want to do is I want to take snapshot six, and I want to create a virtual machine where the changes from snapshot six are in the VHD, so I can send that VHD to my friend because uh, he needs to, to work on something related. And this, unfortunately, today this is a little bit tricky to do, uh, but it is completely possible to do uh, through our UI. Basically, what you need to do is you this VM, and through our, our user interface, we have this uh, export import mechanism. And what you do is you select this VM, you say, you now export it, and that'll come up and ask you, you know, give me a directory where I can export this virtual machine to. And exporting creates an entire copy of the virtual machine. And when you export a virtual machine, you get all the snapshots associated uh, with that virtual machine. Once you've exported it, you can turn around and you can import that virtual machine on the same computer, which will essentially give you two copies of this virtual machine. Once you have the copy, then you go through, you delete all the snapshots that you aren't interested in, let it do the merging on the copy, and then you have you know, this single VHD virtual machine that you can send off to your friend while you've kept you know, the original copy of your virtual machine with all your snapshots in Sweet. I have a question. So when you do this, when you have like multiple branches of VM yep. of snapshots, can you actually now actually run two or three different VMs on no. the same base no. VHD? We only allow you to have one active point uh, in in a snapshot tree, as it were. And you know, as as I said, you know, if I you know if I were running down here, let's say I'm taking a snapshot here. If I were running down here. And then I said, hey, I want to go to snapshot three. What we're going to do is we're going to come up and ask you, OK, you can either take a new snapshot and cap this branch, as it were, or you can throw away all your data on this branch since your last snapshot. So we don't allow you to have multiple active points. Every, uh, every branch that's not currently active ends with a snapshot. Um, and then you come back here and you're wrong. Okay. Now, we actually. It's kind of interesting from an a underlying technology uh, point of view, from a virtualization point of view. It's actually not impossible to support multiple running instances. However, from a, the guest operating system point of view, it could get very confusing because if you keep in mind, you know, these guys are all connected to the network. They're all going to have the same network identity and so on. Um, so. Uh, they're going to see each other, they're going to conflict, they're, you know, it's not going to be pretty. You mentioned uh, a while back that there was a uh, prompt for, you know, we've noticed you had a number of mm -hmm. saves. How frequently is that? And, and, how, you know, and what was the decision there on that prompt? So the prompt, you'll only get prompted when you request an action. So if you're running and taking snapshots, you won't get prompted. The prompts are specifically around if you go to apply a snapshot. Um, and you don't have saved data, we'll come up and say, do you want to save this? Um, it's not something that we come up and, and automatically prompt you. 